Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a little different view today. <laughs> Getting creative in quarantine. <laughs> Hopefully not more creative than this. <laughs> this is creative enough. <laughs> uh, I thought that we would do kind of a different pick a deck today. I thought we would just take a look at what they're focused on right now. What is it they're thinking about? What are they learning? So, doesn't that sound fun? And I got this new deck from Lena in Germany. Thank you, Lena. It's called the Everyday, the Everyday Witch. It's such a cool deck. And there's like a cat in every picture. <laughs> So, of course, I had to have that. There could be some interruptions today. I got my window open. The wind is blowing. You know, my hair starts going, woo, and that'll just be fun. Like that. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> okay. So, deck number one is going to be the Everyday Witch Tarot. Which Everyday Witch? We don't know yet. So what I like to do if you're new to my channel is I like to, with these pick a decks, I pick out a couple of cards, just whatever spirit says to do pretty much, but I just pick a couple cards for each deck um, and then I feel into it and I answer questions for the feminines toward their masculines usually, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's just whatever comes through. Um, but it usually is because you guys are, or most of you who watch this channel are in separation and you're wanting to know what the heck is on your divine masculine's mind because he's probably ghosted you or is barely talking to you. And you would think <laughs> at a time like this that they would be talking to you or, ta or, or letting you know what's up. And a lot of you actually have been hearing reports that that is happening. So that that is happening. <laughs> My voice going to squeak right there. Okay. Ah, so... Deck number one, the everyday witch. Two cards that are representative of this masculine would be. Oh, wow. The Knight of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. <laughs> Our favorite cards in the whole deck, right? <laughs> so this masculine is slower than molasses <laughs> this masculine is keeping his eye on you though he's gathering more information about you oh and um i just had that uh, jazz song pop in my head my love is here to stay if you haven't heard that it's a really great song you should probably listen to it <laughs> my love is here to stay something okay so anyway um yeah, so here's the cool thing, though, about this deck, and I'm glad we got it in this deck, <laughs> is I got a holy shirt. Holy shirt. <laughs> it's so comfy, though. Okay, so the Knight of Pentacles is usually the slowest moving knight in the deck. This guy, like, takes his time. Is he an earth sign? Probably. Or he's got earth and his moon or something, but... The guy takes his time, but I'm glad he takes his time because he really thinks things out. He wants to make sure there isn't any kind of anything that can possibly go wrong with his plan. Now, sometimes, though, that can really work to their disadvantage because nothing's ever going to be totally perfect. You got to eventually just like hit the hit the, the dominoes to make them all fall down. Right. But in this deck, look at him. He's taking action. This is like, I've never, there are, I don't know of any other decks where the Knight of Pentacles is actually a guy who's starting to get the move on here, right? So maybe he's been watching you and that is making him want to get a move on things, you know, coming out of a standstill and he might be fighting for you. He might have to fight people's opinions off. You might have to take some kind of a stand with you. I know that was in the daily guidance today as well. 
um, and that black cat represents intuition. So he's got intuition working on his side along his life path. And it's making him feel like he can do anything and he can make this happen, okay? So that's just the representation of him right now. And I guess I'll keep these out to remind me of this guy right now as I tap into him. I just feel like he's really getting um, his ducks in a row right now. I just feel like him getting really organized. It's almost as if he's, I don't know if he knows feng shui, but maybe it's subconscious. He's like working on his feng shui. He's making a place for you in his home. He's like, um, he may have, have broken up with someone or, or he's planning to go a different direction. Maybe he switched directions. Maybe he was going to go this way with someone and he ended up, whoop, I'm going to do this instead. So he's altering his plan and his home and the, like everything in his life to accommodate for you coming into it, feminines. Um, so yeah, he, said, he just said it again, making space for you, making room for you. Um, making like if you have drawers on either side of your bed, you know, he's opening, he's getting the dresser drawers open for you or the side of the closet open for you to be able to like move in and be a part of his life. I, I feel like he's also taking chunks out of his schedule um, for when this all starts. <laughs> Two birds just flew right directly over us, you guys. That is a really good sign. That's communication. And two is coupling. Two people coming together through communication. Yes. All right. So, yeah, he's rearranging his schedule as well. Um, I feel like I feel like this masculine is is really reorganizing his life. I think he's doing a cleanup job, having gotten rid of a karmic person, um, a toxic relationship. I feel like he's even he's even doing some writing exercises and really kind of going deep with his healing. Wow, this is impressive. And he's just like, okay, what type, what areas of my life are going to change going forward from this quarantine? Like, what do I, what do I need to reassess and re-evaluate re right now to have the best success I can with this per person that I love with all of my heart that I'm going to invite into my life as soon as, as soon as feasible, he just said. I don't know if feasible means affordable or if he's just saying feasible generally saying that he knows when this, when, um, like he's going to feel it intuitively since we got that intuition card. Um, he's going to feel intuitively when the right time is to make a move. And he's going to be relying on that intuitive push. Um, he said, don't worry, he's not being lazy and he's not, and he's not dragging his feet. Um, he definitely is coming after you and he's watching you closely until he does. But um, he's just, he's just getting ready. He's just really getting ready. Um, he's doing a great job. I mean, I feel like him, He's even like labeling stuff and he's like reorganizing his CD collection and he's like reorder, like making space in his pantry for your stuff. Even, I mean, it's just like, um, it, he's just doing an overhaul knowing fully well that you're going to just come step right into his life. I feel like kids might be involved for some of you, not all of you, but I feel like, um, they're even like introducing their, their child or children to the idea of you or, um, and, or if you already know this child or children, like, how would you, how would you like it if, you know, Sally came to live with us for, for a while or what, how, what would you think of us moving in together? Or what would you think of, you know, didn't you like it when she was involved in our life or wouldn't you like, like that person um, that you know about to, to be an active part of your life? And just kind of like, it just feels like a, and acclimating, and acclimating. He's also doing some kind of a business plan. I feel him focused on, at his desk or something, like really getting fine, fine tuning. Um, I just keep getting rollout, just a fine tuning a rollout of uh, a bunch of things happening. So it feels very optimistic. I feel like that this is his way of staying in a really good place. Um, I just felt one of you saying, well, why isn't he reaching out yet? Well, he's trusting his intuition. It isn't time yet, and he knows that. And he wants to be ready. He wants to have it all ready. He doesn't mean you any disrespect. Um, he's, just, he's just really a thorough person. <laughs> he's very thorough. And it's going to be a good thing. You're going to be really grateful for it. 
when you when you step into his life, it's going to feel like, wow, you really thought this out. Wow, you thought of everything. Like, holy cow, this feels so nice and so comfortable and so welcoming. Thank you. Thank you. I mattered to you a lot. I mean, yeah, I just even got like new sheets, <laughs> new artwork, new like things that reminded him of the karmic are being replaced, kicked out, burned, thrown away, whatever. And so it's like a total fresh start for you guys. I even feel like some of you might be even going into a new house. I've felt this before for some of you, but whatever it is, it's going to be, it's going to feel like a clean slate, a brand new beginning. No, no reminders, no reminders of the pain of the past. And that could even mean that you once lived there and maybe you, you know, had problems before. And so he's, he's wanting to, to start again. He's right. He's wanting a brand new start. I'm surprised this isn't the full card, but it's, in, it's implied. But he wants to talk to you and, and get a rush on things and, and get a hurry on things. When the cat says it's time, when the intuition says it's time, so you can't push this natural process. It's going to happen when it happens. And then when, when he's told, he's going to say, yes, God, I'm going. You know, he's, not, he's up for it. He's totally up for it. And he's, you know, even though he feel in, a, in some ways he feels maybe more immature than you, younger than you, um, less, I don't know, it could be like beneath you in some way. He's still like, look at him. He's like, like what, may, what comes to mind is the Goonies. They were up for an adventure. They weren't scared. They knew they were young and they didn't know exactly what they were doing, but they were up for an adventure. And so is he. He's got his little black cat going along with. So he's going to be listening to his intuition and, and, and taking off. I even feel like some of them are going to foreign lands. I look at in the background, kind of looks like that could be France or Italy, right? So maybe you guys are going on a trip. Oh, he's got his cat there too in the bag. The cat's out of the bag though. Notice that as well. The cat is out of the bag. He's not in it. <laughs> so the cat's coming out of the bag. He's coming out from hiding and he is going to reveal some truths to you going to communicate you to, with you, but it's got to be at the right time. He said, it's not that he's asleep and it's not that he's forgotten you and it's not that he doesn't love you anymore. <laughs> he said something about, um, he says, you're kind of like him. Like you get insecure pretty easy, <laughs> but he's saying like, don't stop it. Like stop that habit. Don't, don't be down what we have. Don't doubt what we have. All right, so the next one is Connolly. Deck number two. Deck number two is Connolly. So which two cards represent the masculine for this pile? What is this masculine up to? What is he doing? What is he focusing on right now? Why isn't he calling? What is up with this guy? All right. So for deck number two, this masculine has page of pentacles and the moon. So it's almost, uh, this guy feels like he's kind of going inside and he's taking a look at why he does what he does. Why do I keep getting stuck in the same dang situations that make me feel insecure? Why do I keep disempowering myself? He might still have a karmic in his life, but he's, he's like, um, just, he knows he's got a plan on getting the heck out of there and he's going to announce his plan. This is news. He may even, uh, the news might also be that he is like having some, some revelations. Um, he's having some realizations about himself that he can't wait to tell you about the third party. So if he, if he has had a third party that he's gotten rid of, um, he is going to be, he's really doing some soul searching, I feel right now. He's doing some soul searching. And then when, he's, when he feels like he's made some really good grounded discoveries and he's really made a lot of head, headway and he feels kind of proud of himself, he is going to come to you and he's going to like almost announce it. Like, guess what? <laughs> I realized what an idiot I've been. And I realized why I went with that karmic. And 
I feel an apology in there. I feel like I've learned a lot from that situation. I really want to to offer you something to make you feel more validated. It's like you were right. There's a part of him that was kind of stubborn feeling like he didn't want you to be right. He almost wanted to prove you wrong. Because I think you probably said, you know, I'm the one for you. That karmic isn't. And he was like, you know, <laughs> you know, there's just, he's got a little bit of a, a rebellious, stubborn streak. But um, I feel like with all of this assessing, I feel like the Four of Swords is in there too, because the Four of Swords is also about like going through, it's going through a breakup, but it's also like just going back to reassess everything in terms of what you truly want in a relationship. I feel he's done that. And I feel like he's more willing now to start to communicate with you and start to give back. He wants to show his concern for you. He wants to show that he cares. He wants to even maybe tell you that you were right. Um, it's going to be a hard pill to swallow, he said, but he really does want you to have that validation. And he really does want you to know that you were it all along. Um, he feels reflective, introspective. And he feels like he's addressing some deep-rooted like um, childhood trauma feels like he's really taking a good look at why he even came up with the belief system that he did, why he allowed um, other people to disempower him and to, like, to do all the people pleasing and that typical stuff. He feels bad for some of the communications that you guys have had because he didn't take full advantage. It could have been so much more mature of communication. It could, he could have offered you so much more and been really coming from the heart, but he was really caught up in the fears of his, of his head. He was really caught up in insecurities and he was trying to, it's like he was trying to go by the way that he's always been trained or that he's always done in relationships. And he kind of, he was like, I really kind of screwed myself over the way I was, I was talking to her like she was other people. And that wasn't going to cut it because she's so much more authentic. She's so much more genuine. And I, I really needed to meet her at that, at that space that, you know, coming from the heart like she was. And he regrets that. He feels really bad about that, that he didn't just meet you on that level. Um, he says he's ready to start doing that now. He's, he's ready to start practicing doing that now. He's not quite accustomed to that kind of communication and that kind of clarity and genuineness. Um, but he is, he's, he's willing. Um, I feel a little, a little bit of hesitation yet still because he doesn't feel like he's like mastered it. That's why he's a page. So he hasn't, re he hasn't really mastered this whole communication thing, but he's definitely willing and he's definitely willing to admit that he was wrong and apologize and then do what he can to give some things to you now, some communication, some text messages, some concern, some care, um, even maybe a little future talk. A little this guy's not as as committal as the first one the first one's like all in he's just gotta you know put his plan together and, and go um well he's putting his plan together but i'm first one he's like all about like boom he's in it the second one he's he's more um he's blossoming he's awakening first one he's awake <laughs> he's he's wide awake he's a wide awake to who you are He's wide awake to what this whole thing is waking him up to, even spiritually. He's staying focused on staying out of a negative mindset. Um, the second one is kind of like, I'm starting to realize some things. I'm starting to realize that I'm still a little nervous. I'm still a little apprehensive, but I'm willing. He's willing. Okay. Wait a minute, there's something else he wants to say. This guy might be into um, smoking marijuana and playing video games. Just he, He's done in the past, he's done a lot of numbing out. A lot of wasted time doing activities that really aren't very stimulating for the brain. Yeah. Okay. 
Radiant Rider Waite is deck number three. You guys feel free to time and stamp these below. Although you're going to end up watching all these anyway, so I don't know what the point is, but all right. Deck number three. Deck number three. I just got the word rodeo. <laughs> I think he's feeling like he's taking a playful attitude to all of this. He's feeling like um, <laughs> he's feeling like he's taking this as an adventure, kind of like that first one with the Goonies. He's like, this isn't my first rodeo. This isn't my first rodeo. It's not going to be my last rodeo. I am going to, I'm going to be like the master survivor. I am going to be like, <laughs> he's really, he's really trying to figure all this out. I feel like he's looking into conspiracy theories and stuff. And he's like, hmm. And he's trying to connect the dots. I think he's like, listens to Q. Like he's like all trying to decode Q. And he's like, <laughs> just, I just feel like he's almost like in mad scientist mode. He's not reaching out to you yet because he still hasn't gotten it all figured out. He wants to feel more solid when he comes to you. I haven't even gotten to the cards yet. All right, let's look at his cards. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. All right. He's working on loving himself, being grounded and mature to establish that family and his dreams coming true. And guess what the main element is in these two cards? Money. Focused on survival and money. He wants a positive result. He wants your guys' dreams to come true. He wants that like utopia at the end of this. He wants to figure out the way that he can, that he can create almost the new earth coming in. He's feeling optimistic. He's looking at this as the big awakening of the planet. He's a deep, beautiful, poetic person. <laughs> this man is like, oh my gosh. I don't know. Um, maybe he's a Pisces or something. I don't know. Full of love. The man is full of love. Um, and he's a bit of a dreamer. But he's really, really, I love those two cards are just both so incredibly positive because she's all about like coming from a really abundant mindset. She wants a brand new beginning, but she wants it to be like secure and mature and grounded and solid and calm and peaceful. and nurturing you know so it's like he's gotten down to the heart of the matter and it could maybe because he knows you feminine um maybe he is trying to be more like you maybe he's trying to be to you know he's like man she's got it all like she's just so amazing and mature and she's like got it all she's this receptive queen sitting on her throne just kind of Looks like she's just kind of waiting for me. <laughs> she's got a big, big old fat coin sitting on her pocket, just kind of waiting for me to come along. And that bunny, that's funny for Easter. But that little, maybe, maybe something's going to happen over Easter. Maybe he's going to reach out to you and give you that offer, feminines. He's going to put that coin on your lap with the bunny. It may be. I mean, you know what other what other things the bunny represents? <laughs> you never know. I don't think that's going to be happening for quarantine, but I'm just saying maybe that's all in the brain with this new beginning. Yeah, because she's also like got green and red all over her. Like her dress is red, which is passion. She's she's dressed in passion, and then she's got a green cloak over it, which is not even covering her. So. It's just barely maybe keeping her, just just keeping the, the edge off a little bit with some healing energy. So, you know, this is a br beautiful brand new beginning that's really, um, I feel a lot of hope. I feel like building on a dream, but not, not in, a, um, in a more tangible way. Like, hey, let's put our collective, let's put our heads together. I know that we could come up with, a really beautiful, bright future, and our dreams can come true. How do we? How do we put our beautiful minds together and create something amazing? Um, he's also thinking that you guys could like build something together, like get, maybe together you guys could have this really incredible um, retirement. You know, maybe you guys. Maybe he's thinking to get a dog or a cat, or like having have more kids with you, or have kids with you, or. Um, 
like just building his legacy even. And it's stemming from him making some major choices to love himself and put himself first, which is really beautiful. And I see these dogs in this picture. So it's like he's really, and I see a little girl. So there's a little girl and there's dogs. So there's uh, loyalty and faithfulness and maybe a little girl. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sneeze didn't come out, but it was there. <laughs> this little girl, this little girl has really made him grow up. And this, this idea of this, of this new life with you has really matured him and made him think longer term too. You know, he, he's, a, he's smart. He's a, he's a smart guy. And I don't think he gives himself enough credit. And he's, he really does come from, come from the heart. Very beautiful person. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't think, I don't think he would admit to that. <laughs> he's got a little bit of a macho edge. A little, he's a little bit in denial of what a special person he is. Um. But this little girl kind of brings that out in him. And I think that's why he's so in love with this little girl is she sees in him what he knows he's kind of covering up, but it's true about him. She sees right through his, his uh, macho exterior sometimes. Um, let's see what else. He really does. He, he really is focused on you guys having dinners and deep talks and getting out in nature. It feels wholesome in a way. I think he's looking forward to things feeling wholesome. I think things have been kind of tainted in his world for a while. And uh, he, it's like he's getting a lot of unknown mysteries solved in, about life in general. He's waking up to spirituality. He's waking up to what harmony would feel like in a relationship sexy harmony, like having a lot of passion and having peace. Um, and he's really looking forward to seeing what like real intimacy is like with someone. He knows he can have that with you. I see the star card too in my mind. That's, uh, he, he knows you guys can heal one another. He knows you, can get, you guys can be real with one another. And he knows you guys are each other's wish come true. I also call that my Christmas Eve card because it's it's like that feeling of anticipation. Like Santa Claus is going to, you're like you're a little kid and Santa Claus is going to leave a bunch of presents under your tree. So maybe that's also symbolic of him just knowing that things are really going to work out for you guys. And he's very optimistic and keeping his thoughts positive about that. And um, he believe, I really believe he believes in the new earth. And he wants you guys to be a part of it. And maybe that little one too. <laughs> Okay, and deck number four. Deck number four, the first thing I'm seeing is an eagle. So whoever this masculine is or these masculines are, um, it's like he's tapping into his, he's staying present in the moment. He's staying really quiet in his mind, and he's also being led by his intuition. The, e the eagle represents the higher self to me, being led by your ultimate truths, not letting anybody else's opinion sway you, really listening to your gut, um, not letting society get to you anymore, just being like throwing out all the rules and just being like, I'm going to do what I want to do because I feel like it's part of my purpose and my passion. He's awakening. He's healing. It's beautiful. This is the hanged man. It's about like pausing to reflect. And it's also about having some major epiphanies and realizations. We could, uh, we could actually apply this to the, to the deck three guy too, right? He's going through that as well. Um, but this guy, he wants to come out of hiding and say like, yippee. <laughs> he wants to shine his sunshine all over you. <laughs> he wants to be vulnerable with you. He wants to just go ahead and come out as this naked little kid and just stand there all embarrassed in front of you and just tell you everything. He's like, I do just have to like, just come out with it. I just got to tell her how I feel. Cause it's like, 
it's like rising up in him. Like he it just feels like a giddy little kid. Um, but he's just going, he's just, maybe he, he maybe he just went through a breakup because, you know, this would be the type of healing energy you would go through after a breakup. Like having all these realizations about what that was all about and, and just healing your heart and getting back to that, that playful energy again, having a sense of humor again, waking up from maybe um, the, the negativity of the relationship with that karmic. Um, really seeing what was underneath there that was kind of being hidden from, from him for a while. I'm going to put these down here. I feel like he, he's also thinking a lot about the, the fun times that you guys could have. I think he's really missing you a lot and thinking about you a lot. And I think he's remembering times when I'm seeing him tickling you on the couch and um, just kissing all over, all over you and you like squirming all over the place and just like laughing and um, very playful, sweet energy. And I also feel like you guys have had some really beautiful moments, even crying in a park, crying out in nature somewhere really beautiful. It's like you guys could really talk heart to heart. And I think that's the moment he really fell in love with you is he, he thought, you know, I can, I can just, I can just totally say anything to her. I can say anything to her and she totally gets me. He feels really bad that he pushed you away. After that, but it was it was pretty intimidating what he felt for you. Um, some of you, um, some of you, this is an energetic thing. So some of you haven't actually hung out in the physical, but in the five D, you've been there in nature with him. Everywhere he's gone, it's almost like he's talking to you out loud, like in the five D. Wish you were here. I want to share this with you. I know you would understand. I know you would hold me right now. I know that we could cry together. I know that, you know, I know that how it's like it's sacred to him. It's a sacred connection. And it's very healing for him to know that he has someone like that in his life. I think the two of you feel like you guys are the only people in the whole world that you can really trust. Like you guys just know that there's a deep, deep bond there that even if you felt paranoid about everybody else in your life, you wouldn't be that way with each other. It's really, um, it's like a deep bond that goes way back and it has to do with like honor, honor and sacredness. But it's deep and you guys can both feel it. You guys both, it's almost as if you guys already are in a relationship even though you're separated, right? And even though you're not talking, it's like you're already together and you're at peace with that. You're at peace with that and you know that it's coming together right when it should. You guys are talking to, to each other a lot in the 5D. Um, you can tell when each other is sad and missing the other. But you, you have faith in this connection and that it's coming together and it almost is going to very soon. Um, so why isn't he coming forward? I feel like he really hasn't taken good time for himself before. He's always been in a relationship, one after the other, or overlapping. And I feel like he's really good taking some good, um, some good time to really breathe in some fresh air. I feel like this guy's definitely getting out in nature, and I feel like he's, well, I mean, it could be like, doing a guided meditation with birds chirping, you know, it could be, could be different for everybody, but taking baths, he's even taking baths. He's not a bath kind of person, but I feel like he's taking bath with bath salts and essential oils and candles. He's getting in touch with his feminine nature, maybe for the first time ever. And I feel like um, maybe even getting in touch with like berries and elementals and things like that. He's believing in something in, in a, there's something awakening in him. Like there's this seed growing that's like, it's like a little, little, it's like a little seed about to sprout above the soil. He feels like a new person. He feels like he's been born again in a way. He's looking at life very differently, brand new eyes, like an infant almost. Yeah, wow. He's like a little kid. 
exploring this wondrous new life through new eyes, waking up, this is all about like having those epiphanies. So breaking through the soil and having just being this beautiful new thing. It's like a puppy or a kitten or some other, some other kind of brand new, brand new life. He's, he's also um, going to soon be getting to where he's getting on his feet, feeling more confident. Like he wants to, like, you know how little kids, once they figure out how to stand up, then they're all like, oh, now I can really, I can take three steps, you know, and then they want to run. <laughs> and then they want to, you know. So I feel like this guy, even though he's taking some good time to, to really love himself and heal, um, he is going to be ready to run. The, the minute he can, the minute he sees that he has the strength to do it, he's going for it. He's running right at you. And I just saw like this little kid all proud, like, look, daddy, I can, I can run, you know, look, mommy, I can run. And it's like, he's so proud of himself and he's running right at you. Um, I feel like this one, this one can be mixed. It's the, some of these people are actually some of these masculines are actually going through this in a relationship and some have broken up. Um, if they're in a relationship, I feel like they're separated or they're not communicating with that person. Like they're living in different households or they're just very much not talking. And I feel like he's just really being in his strength and his truth. And he's not putting up with any BS anymore. It just feels like he's like very strong and healing and seeing things very clearly now. It's almost like I see the the justice card and the the ace of swords as well. So it's like he he knows his truth. He's clear. He will have victory and he will do justice in this situation. He will make the karmic he's put her in his in her place. For what she's done, the manipulation, the lies, maybe even cheating, whatever it is, he is like turning a deaf ear to her, a deaf eye, a deaf ear, like everything. He's like, no, I'm doing the right thing now for myself, out of self-love and self-respect and for my feminine because I don't want her screwed with it. All right. I hear somebody listening, so I'm going to get out of here. All right, guys. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I even did light language on that last one. It was just so clear. It just, like, came right through. You guys have a beautiful day. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, if you like my videos, please share, subscribe, and set your bell notifications on so you'll know the moment they come out. Also, don't forget that you can go to my website and order a personal reading at amysatori.com forward slash services. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day.